What milestone or markers would you look for in a product that might not be performing well to determine if you should sunset it or not? Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent Product Management Mock Interview. My name is Kevin Wei, and on today's show, we have Matt. We're going to be doing a craft and execution question. And before we get started, Matt, do you want to just tell the audience a few words about who you are, what you do? Sure. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a longtime PM coach here at Exponent. Uh, I've, uh, my, at my, throughout my career, I've been at Google and a number of smaller startups, uh, and I'm excited to be here today. Great. So the craft and execution question I'd like to ask you is this, what milestone or markers would you look for in a product that might not be performing well to determine if you should sunset it or not? Got it. Okay. So just to repeat that back. So, uh, at what milestones or markers would I look at? if my product isn't performing well to determine if we should sunset it or not. Right. Okay, right. great. Uh, just give me a minute to uh, think this through a little bit and then I'll come back and answer. Cool. Okay. So, um, you know, great question. And, you know, as I think about this, uh, a couple of things that just stick out to me to start with, um, you know, I'm going to have to balance a couple of different things here, bring in a lot of different considerations, you know, what's on our roadmap and, you know, what's the effort required to continue to support this product or how does it split our focus? Uh, you know, what's the user sentiment around it? What's the strategic important, importance? How do our stakeholders feel about it? Um, you know, all these sorts of things are going to come into that decision-making process. Um, but, uh, to start out, let me talk about that. You know, when am I looking? What are those milestones? Um, and, uh, you know, I think these milestones probably come in a couple different flavors, right? There's the ones that are, you know, sort of uh, like a, a flag going up of some sorts be because it's become necessary or relevant for us to consider uh, sunsetting this product. And then the other side is, you know, just like as part of our regular planning process, uh, and, you know, kind of evaluating where we are. Uh, as far as those ones that make it necessarily relevant, that could be cases where, you know, maybe we're refactoring the product and continue to support this would be really difficult. Um, and, you know, we have to figure out if that's worth it. Um, it could be that we've decided to move the product in a different direction. And so we don't want to support this anymore. Like we don't want users doing the thing that this product does. Um, it could be becoming obsolete or redundant with something that we're doing. Uh, it could be causing a problem of some sort, whether that's like a security issue or you know, some kind of like user experience issue. Uh, you know, so there, there might be something that in some sense is a little more, more urgent that causes us to really look at this and say, hey, you know, should we be sunsetting this now? Or you know, what do we do about this product? Um, on the planning side, you know, in general, it's just good to take stock of your product surface. So, you know, as I go into planning mode, a lot of times I'll be looking at the various products that we support and figuring out, you know, like what they're, you know, if they're continuing to provide value, if they're performing well, um, you know, there doesn't have to be an explicit problem, but sometimes you can get a sense of like, hey, you know, this might be dragging us a little bit, or this might be causing some problems for our users or causing some confusion. Uh, so, you know, good to keep track of that as well. Um, you know, in general, I'm usually a fan of keeping at least as a smaller product surface, uh, if you can, just because it creates less work for everyone, um, and, you know, creates less opportunities for conflicts within your product or confusions or, you know, documentation getting out of date and things like that. Um, not to say that you should be sunsetting everything, but, you know, uh, you, there should be some, sense of like, okay, does everything need to actually stay in the product? We might be able to remove some things. Cool. So what was so, kind of determined, yeah. like, like once you determine that you want to sunset it because of the considerations that you mentioned, is there a yeah. process that you'd lay out to do this? Yeah. Um, you know, the process, the first part of it is, you know, I have those considerations that kind of point me towards whether or not I want to sunset it. Obviously I'd have to also look at like the metrics. Uh, and all those considerations I mentioned before, the strategic importance and all these things. And those are going to determine uh, a bit of that process as well, right? If there's still high usership, 
um, but we need to sunset it for some strategic or you know compliance reason or something like that, right? That's going to be a different process than if it's got very low usership and you know it's just not worth supporting anymore. Um, and so, uh, you know, as I go through that process of you know actually going on to sunset this, um, you know, some of the things I'm thinking about are you know, as we're sunsetting it, is there any other value we can gain from this, right? Is there something we can learn from what we've done here? Is there, you know, some way to, you know, continue to serve these users or move them to another product that we have? Um, is there, uh, you know, is there some last hurrah for this product, depending on exactly what it is, you know, uh, sometimes games will have, you know, before they're shutting down servers, we'll have some kind of, you know, big fun experience. Um, and then, you know, as we're actually shutting it down, how do we do that gracefully, right? How are we transitioning those customers uh, or, you know, if they have to move somewhere else, you know, how can we make that easier for them so that they don't have a bad experience? Because obviously users, you know, if they've been using this product and they care about it, you know, they don't want to see it go. They don't want to have to learn a new product. They don't want to have to lose their data or things like that. So, you know, usually uh, I aim to be pro user, even if they're not coming back to a product of ours, I want them to feel good uh, at least as good as possible about that process of uh, of this process of this product being sunsetted. Um, so I'm considering all those things on the internal side. You know, there are lots of stakeholders who are going to have opinions about this, and some who might not want to do this and might feel strongly about it. So you know, obviously the engineering team, you know, they probably put in a lot of work in building this product, and some of them might feel you know a connection to you know this uh, this thing that they created. Uh, the sales team may, you know, uh, have used it as a selling point of the product, and we're going to have to, you know, make sure that they're, you know, that they understand why we're doing this, or that they understand what the alternatives are. Um, leadership, you know, obviously have to get them, uh, you know, aware of the situation and make sure that, you know, they're on board with the direction that we're going or, or why we're sunsetting this. There could be, you know, uh, larger marketing implications. You know, sometimes if we're shutting it down for legal reasons, obviously they're going to be a stakeholder. Um, but you know, uh, this is the a situation to communicate early and often, uh, at least with close stakeholders, right? You, you know, especially from my experience at Google, when something gets announced that it's being sunset, uh, people from all over the company would have opinions about it. Um, so you, you know, you want to make sure that you're managing that communication uh, to the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm but definitely within the people who are going to be directly affected uh, by your shutdown of this product, you know, you want to be bringing them in to help you figure out, okay, how are we messaging this to users? Okay. What are we building to help them uh, get off of this, you know, smoothly. Um, and so, you know, shutting down a product, it's uh, it's not as easy as just pulling the plug, right? There is extra work actually that goes into sunsetting it uh, if you want to do that well. Uh, so, you know, it, that's the kind of plan that I'm thinking about. I'm happy to go deeper into, you know, some of the actual conversations or, or decisions that might be made along the way as well, uh, if you want to know more there. Cool. Um, I think we're good so far. Um, I think what I heard from you was that you taught, you think about uh, should we even sunset it in the first place? Like, what are the considerations there? And then you talked about the process. You talked about how you would manage this externally with the customers. Maybe you'd have some last hurrah, maybe some cool banner, um, help, you know, help them move their data just to help them uh, continue to do their tasks. And then you talked about uh, the internal processes with engineering and managing stakeholders. I think this is um, very helpful. Um, yeah, like may, maybe we can dive deeper into like some of those conversations. So like uh, what is maybe like pick one key conversation and tell me how you'd handle it. Yeah, let, let's talk about the relationship with engineering. Uh, you know, it's a particularly important one for a lot of PMs. Um, and I think that there's sort of a, in some ways there might be a more personal connection. Um, and so it becomes kind of, uh, I think more of a relationship uh, challenge to, to make sure that this goes well. And you really do need their support in order to, to shut these things down gracefully. Um, so obviously, as I mentioned, you know, you want to communicate this uh, early on, make sure that they're involved. So, you know, as throughout this process of exploring, okay, should we be shutting this down? You know, is it performing or not? Obviously, one thing I didn't mention earlier is like whether or not we can actually save this, if there's some changes that we can make to the product. Um, but assuming that, you know, we've already explored this and decided that we're going down the sunsetting path. Um, you know, the tech lead would have been involved in those discussions earlier on, right? So they, they, this shouldn't be a surprise to them. 
right? They uh, probably understand why this is being made. They might have, you know, uh, not wanted it to happen, but ideally there's enough trust in the team already that, you know, even if there's disagreement or even if, you know, uh, there's like a desire to, to hold on to this product, we all, you know, move in unison towards what we think is best for the team or for the, towards the decision that we've all made overall. Um, so hopefully that should help there. Obviously a lot of the engineers on the team uh, themselves will also, you know, probably have uh, feelings about this. And so, you know, would want to make sure that it's being communicated to them, uh, that they understand why we're doing this, what it allows us to do in the future, what we're doing instead. Um, a lot of engineers do care about the user experience and, you know, won't want us to upset users. So we'd also want to explain that plan to them about what we're doing, uh, both because, you know, it'll help, you know, allay any of their, it might help allay concerns, but they're also going to help build uh, some of those solutions. And hopefully they can be, you know, proud uh, to, you know, to help with that. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the relationship side of it. Obviously from the prioritization or from the, the building side, you know, we're going to have to have a clear sense of what we're doing to help our users. If we have to build some kind of data export, uh, if we have to bring users over to another product, you know, how do we make that graceful? Um, you know, obviously all the actual infrastructural work that goes into shutting down a product and managing, you know, like winding it down and shutting down whatever services or figuring out if like other, you know, figuring out what we can cut out of the code base in the future, maybe don't want to be too bold about a refactor at this point, but you know, uh, yeah. right there, there is a lot of planning that goes into now this hole of sorts that we're uh, putting into the product. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll probably have to put this on the roadmap, right? It's not a thing that we can just do tomorrow. We're going to have to figure out, okay, these are the several steps and phases that we're going to have. Um, you know, we're going to give users time to find out about this. We're going to launch, you know, this data export tool at this point so that they can start to move over. And then, you know, it's probably not going to be six months, a year, two years later, depending on what the product is and, you know, uh, our users. But, uh, you know, it's going to be that long process of getting to the point where we are technically ready uh, to shut it down and, you know, customers feel ready for it to, uh, to be shut down. Yeah, I think uh, that makes sense for the relationship with engineering. And I think like for two points, like first, tactically, you want to avoid any thrash. You want to make sure that the team understands the priorities and how, how we're going to get there. And the second is probably just morale, like making sure that these engineers who have yeah. some connection to the product, um, you know, they, you, they, they know that you're hearing any of their thoughts and um, you're, you're able to like, keep morale up, even if the decision has been made to shut things down. Yeah, and that thrash point is actually a really important one. This is especially meaningful if this is a relatively new product, right? To have just built something and then, you know, on a short timeline, be shutting it down because, you know, probably it means that it failed miserably, unfortunately, or it had some like huge problems. Like that can be really demoralizing. Um, and that's a really important place to have like a, a post-mortem on like, why didn't this work, right? And like really bring in lots of opinions, make sure that everybody gets heard. Uh, so we can, one, you know, make sure that everybody understands what's going on, gets a chance to, to be a part of this, but also so that we don't have this kind of situation again or avoid, avoid it as much as possible. Obviously, if this is something that's, you know, built 15 years ago and it's just time to sunset it, like it's the, the thrash is, you know, not as, uh, not as meaningful. It's like, okay, it's lived its purpose and now it's time for us to move on to new things. And that probably will fit very well with our, you know, you know the strategic priorities we've already discussed with them. Cool. Thanks, Matt. Um, and before we wrap things up, was there one tip that you'd give the audience if they were facing a craft and execution question? Yeah. Um, a lot of this, uh, you know, whenever I think about it, it kind of depends on your theory of PMing, right? How is it that you approach problems as a PM? What do you think is important? Um, you know, and so as I go through, I try to explain, you know, how I'm thinking about the problem itself. And then, you know, how that contributes to what I'm doing about it. Um, and, you know, that includes everything from what's the decision we're making about the product and how do we understand the product to how am I thinking about my team? Um, how am I thinking about managing the actual process of execution, right? Uh, these questions are not just about the, the one decision. It's about the entire process there. Makes sense. Cool. Thanks, Matt. And for the audience watching at home, good luck with your upcoming PM interview. Thanks so much for watching. 
Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.